Isaac Saldana, I said that right, uh, is the CEO and co-founder of SendGrid, a cloud-based email service that replaces companies' email infrastructure, so they don't have to worry about deliverability, scalability, um, or metrics. Look at what are the ISPs that are most challenging to get into, kind of the reasons behind that, what are the ISPs that are easy to get into, um, and then also we'll take a look at things like um, sender scores. So sender score is an <coughs> algorithm that return path came up with to determine the, the sending reputation of all emailers out there. So um, whether you know it or not, you actually have a sender reputation. Um, you can go to sendersquad.org um, and put in your um, IP address, even your domain, and we'll look up to see what IPs you see sending from that, and then what your score is on that. Um, things we base on your reputation are um, the number of complaints that you get from uh, subscribers when they click on the report spam button. Um, we also look at the uh, things like spam traps, so email addresses that are set up to, to really capture um, you know, spammers who are you know, doing bad things. Um, there are also recycled addresses by the ISPs to determine uh, uh, how, how good your list hygiene practices are. Um, and additionally, we look at unknown users. So if you have um, a high number of addresses that, that don't exist anymore, um, that's going to occur negatively um, on your report as well. So here are the um, top ISPs with the highest inbox placement rate. So these are going to be the top five ISPs. Um, that we're monitoring, and, and we just looked at North America. This is February 2010 through uh, 2011. When you say top versus bottom, top means uh, from the sender's perspective. From the sender's perspective, correct. Um, so we have uh, Cablevision, uh, CompuServe, Cox, Mobile um, which is Apple, and USA.net. So kind of the uh, theme here is that probably not a lot of people use these domains. Um, so as a result, the senders um, that are mailing to these probably have an easier time to get into. Um, yeah. Across your client base or across a random selection of Yeah, in this case, this is a, across our client base. So we have um, over a thousand customers using our uh, monitoring tools. So what we're doing is we're capturing those IP addresses and those domains and then doing a, a look up on that. And that's um, for this report. Um, and, and then also, um, CompuServe is owned uh, you know, by AOL. Now. I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, Charles, but they have their own uh, filtering as well on top of AOLs. So um, that's why AOL was not in here. Um, Cablevision, Cox, they're, they're cable providers. You know, a lot of people get email addresses by default, um, and, and they probably don't use them. I think most people, you know, if you look at your database, it's you know the top four. Uh, you know, it's Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, and So here are the top five ISPs with the lowest inbox placement rate. So for you know for those people that are sending, um, these are going to be the hardest um, to get into. So for those of you that raised your hands and were worried about deliverability, uh, raise your hand if, if this kind of reflects your your challenges as well. Yeah. So um, so really, um, what was interesting out of this is that um, Gmail isn't in the top five anymore. Um, when we did this about a year and a half ago, Gmail was the hardest ISP by a long shot to get into. And now um, Yahoo is. Yahoo is the hardest ISP to get into, meaning that they have the strictest um, spam filtering. Um, and I think that's a result of their new um, spam filtering uh, platform. There'll be a lot of different more uh, metrics like uh, domain level, um, IP reputation. They're also using uh, third party filtering as well as their own um, proprietary filtering. So that is the um, hardest to get into. SBC, of course, goes out over Yahoo's infrastructure. Um, at t also uses um, Yahoo's infrastructure. So that's the kind of the uh, common thread there, as well as well as about South. So we kind of have the um, four uh, horsemen here of Yahoo. Um, and then Excite, um, Excite uses uh, Blue Tie, um, and they have a very um, sophisticated filter on the back. So this is a little bit ugly to read, but I thought it was um, interesting to look at what deliverability in the center score would be my vertical. Um, so for those of you here, uh, you know we have social networking. Those would be like the, the Facebooks of the world. Um, they have um, a ninety-one percent inbox reach. So meaning that out of all the emails that they send, only ninety-one percent of those actually reach um, reach the inbox. Um, also interesting here, the worst two. Um, third-party list vendors. So, um, for those of you that aren't familiar with what a third-party list vendor is, um, those emails that you get from these like strange, it's usually strange, gobbledygook um, addresses. It's like, hey, get your Target coupon, get your Walmart coupon, get a free Big Mac. Um, 
they're not sent by those parties, but by a third party. Um, usually they use things like co-registration, a lot of times they buy um, lists. It's very usually non-permission based, uh, meaning the subscribers never actually opted into those lists. Um, so they have a very, very poor deliverability rate of 26%. Um, and government didn't do too much better. Um, so they're actually at 39%. Um, the reason for this is, um, you know, they, they obviously are, um, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with CanSpam, um, that's meaning that's um, for these campaigns. Um, strangely enough, there's another uh, Tom Saylor in uh, Seattle, Washington, and I am getting a deluge of political emails now um, intended for Tom Saylor in Seattle, Washington. So that kind of shows you how far they go to, um, um, to get email addresses. Um, and then really, you know, the best here, um, we have, you know, entertainment, so those are kind of like the, the music um, sites, um, things like that, movie sites, Netflix. Um, we also have um, retail, um, you know, pretty high as well at, at 92%. Um, meaning that these people obviously have good permission practices, that they're actually getting permission to email these users. Um, and it shows, they have low complaints um, and, and everything looks good. They actually have a very high inbox rate. Just you know as well, for average across all of the senders, uh, the average inbox rate um, when I did this was at 82%. So only 82% of, of you guys who are sending out an email, um, only 82% actually reaches the inbox. The rest are going into the spam folder um, or into the um, missing black hole. Um, and then I wanted to look also, uh, just kind of focus on the center score uh, by vertical, and you can see there's the correlation. Uh, so when you're looking at the inbox delivery, um, it matches. So government and third party list vendors um, fare really poorly. Entertainment, retail, publishing um, does very well. And then also, um, you know, when we look at complaint rate by vertical, we can see which has the highest complaint rates. But what kind of surprised me here was the retail um, had the highest complaint rate out of all of them, but yeah, one of the best um, deliverability um, metrics here. Um, also, third party list vendors, and this surprised me because they had a, um, it was a very high complaint rate, um, but I would actually think that retail um, would be sort of switched around. And I think the reason for that is because a lot of people, um, when they sign up for a list, people don't have good practices like things with frequency. So, you know, a retailer like, um, I'm trying to think of a good example here, like um, J. Crew. Um, I probably get a daily email from him, um, but I'm not in the market to, to buy clothes every day. Well, maybe I am, but. Um, so as a result, people complain more with retail. Um, third party list vendors, the reason why their complaint rates are low is, well, their message has never reached the inbox. As we saw before, people probably never even saw the email, so if they can't see the emails, they can't report it as spam, therefore they have a low complaint rate. Um, that also explains why um, by retail, would have a higher complaint And then also, unknown user rate um, by vertical. Um, so these means addresses that no longer exist. Um, banking had the highest. Um, this is primarily due to um, it being transactional email. A lot of them don't want to actually remove those um, emails from their list. It makes sense. Um, you know, people receive notifications, bank statements, things like that. Um, they're a little bit leery on um, removing addresses from trans transactional messages. Um, third party list holders. Um, surprised me because uh, they always have low permission rates. They're actually buying lists, uh, doing coverage, people put in a lot of bad addresses. I would expect that to be a lot, um, a lot higher. Um, social networking um, was high just because of import address books. So if I'm inviting my friends to Facebook, uh, MySpace, things like that, I'm uploading my address book. As a result, a lot of my addresses in my address book are invalid and old. I've had a Hotmail account, for example, in, uh, since 1996. And um, I forget what the social networking site was, but I wasn't know I wasn't really paying attention. I accidentally uploaded my address book, um, and everything bounced. Um, I would probably say maybe five to ten percent of my own address book was really active. The rest were uh, not. And then um, volume. So we actually take a look at volume. So um, we're really looking to see if uh, people are sending consistent volumes. So if we have an IP address that. Um, it is pretty much, you know, at flatline, it's, it's zero. They're not sending any email today. Um, but tomorrow, we see they're sending, you know, three million a day. That sends out a red flag. The reason why is because spammers obviously hijack PCs, um, you know, with their botnets and they're sending out emails. So it's kind of a characteristic of spam. Because it will see an IP one day that didn't have anything, the next day, um, it will be sending email. 
Um, and, and here you can see that, um, so obviously the higher the score here is, it's better, that means it's more consistent because I don't know the, the center score here goes from zero to 100. Um, so, um, you know, here the worst, you know, again, we're, um, we have third party list vendors um, that pair pretty poorly. Um, charitable organizations um, also pair poorly a lot of times there. Um, they can only reach people by, by buying lists as well. And a lot of times they're not usually consistently sending out messages they usually have. Um, you know, normal pledge drives, you can think about NPR when you tune in. I think just recently they had a pledge drive. Um, so they only have it maybe twice a year, so their volume fluctuates a bit. So any questions over kind of these center scores? Yes. Uh, is, there, is there really much of a difference in deliverability between like constant contact or eye contact or mail chat? Um, yeah, like big? yeah good, good question. So um, a lot of ESPs have, you know, um, published like benchmark reports and other ESPs. And I think we're actually going to be talking about that in a little bit, but there's um, really the difference is, is uh, I would say the quality of centers of people there. So ESPs really are responsible for it. Like, really they are maybe up to a certain point. Um, but really after that it's, it's the marketers, it's the people sending us their marketing practices. So how are they acquiring it? Are they getting permission to email those people? Um, how frequently are they emailing them? Um, things like that that really affects deliverability. So ESPs are um, you know, more focused on the technology part, um, you know, the underlying part. Um, so most of those um, ESPs have that bottom up. Um, Isaac or Charles, do you have anything to add to that? I would say, yeah, yeah. I definitely agree with you as far as uh, um, different ESPs uh, have different deliverability. I think what, one of the things that we did at Sanger is we uh, allow companies to segregate their own reputation. So we don't share the reputation for our customers. So um, that way, and the deliverability of customers like one company or the other. Yeah, we're going to get to a little bit more into that as well as we go through the questions. Well, thank you for that, Tom. Tom, you know, you said you do these, you've been doing these reports you know, many years in a row. Where's the trend going? Is deliverability getting better or worse? Well, the last time we did this, it was at um, it was slightly over 80%, so it fared a little bit better. Um, but mostly it's been pretty flat line around the 80% range. Pretty flat line, maybe getting a little bit better. Yep. Okay, great. Cool. Well, we, we don't have a ton of time, um, but we're all running a little bit later on the conference. Um, so I want to keep it moving. I've got a couple questions I'm, I've got for the audit, for the panelists, and then we'll open up to you guys as well. So I think I'd like to start with you. You know, you've signed up 20,000 customers in the past year and a half, two years. Uh, and the range of priorities, how, big is, how important is deliverability for them when they're signing up for your service? Uh, deliverability is really important. Um, most of our customers come to us because of that. Um, in different companies associated different products with deliverability, there was a study made by a large uh, retailer. Um, and they found out that it, they only were 1% of the yearly email, you know, they, they lose $14 million. Now, um, imagine startups losing 20% of their account confirmation and things like that. So, um, it's a huge ROI, so a lot of companies come to us because of deliverability issues. It sounds, just to make sure I heard you correctly, you'd say that's the biggest reason why people come to you. Yes. Because they're, having, they're doing it some other way, and they're sending it on themselves or some other channel, and the little bill is not working, and that's why they're like, okay, I need to go try something else. Yes. Great. Is that, Tom, is that, you think that's consistent with what you see from your, your customers? Okay. Yeah, yes and no. So there's some, you know, ESPs that, you know, do deliver really, really well. Um, Constant Contact, for example, they use um, a shared IP model. Um, which can be very challenging just because you're, you know, you have thousands of senders, um, you know, sharing sharing an IP address. Um, one bad apple, you know, could really destroy the reputation of all the other senders on that. Um, so, as an ESP that uses um, shared IPs like constant contact or send grid, um, pretty big trend. Um, you really have to do um, a lot of reporting on that. You have to um, be able to drill down to see who has the high complaint rate, who has the end end user. Um, and a lot of times, um, it, it can become you know, like looking for a needle in a haystack to find out who that is um, that's causing you know, the, the deliverability issue. So really, um, yeah, we see a lot of clients that are looking to improve their deliverability um, by switching to ESPs. But um, like I said, it's most of the time, it's usually due to their own reputation. Yeah, well, we're definitely going to come back to the shared IP topic. That's one I, I personally have some strong feelings on. Um, you know, I remember back when I was when I, when I first 
company that was an ESP back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And we didn't quite understand this at the time, but there was this herd mentality of, particularly people with poorer practices, that would kind of like go to one ESP and like all of us send a bunch of mail and they, they, they get that, that ESP blocked and then they go to the next ESP and kind of like move their way uh, through that. And um, you know, I think from the sender's perspective, while people in the industry often realize that it's not really the ESP, it's really the sender, the sender usually thinks it's my ESP and you know, they're to fix that by switching ESP from what I've seen.